Howdy folks, and welcome back to episode 41 of Mingles with Jingles. Some slightly bad news to start off things uh, this week. There will be no Wanker of the Week segment in this week's Mingles with Jingles. Next week, it'll be back as normal, but this week, I'm afraid not. And the reason is because two days ago, I put up episode 7 of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, and that was basically a feature-length episode of Wanker of the Week. And... I just, if you haven't seen it yet, go and see it. If you have seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I must warn you that uh, th that video needs to come with a public health warning. Watching it may seriously damage your intellect due to the sheer level of stupid on display in that video. But trying to do a Wanker of the Week segment for Mingles with Jingles two days after putting that video up would be like going on after Queen at Live Aid. You just can't do it. Sorry, but, you know, there's just no competition. This week's Wanker of the Week is the Good, the Bad and the Ugly episode. Um, the, the old Project Man Cave videos have been surprisingly popular as well. I mean, I, I originally just thought, you know what, But while I'm, since I'm getting all this stuff, I may as well film myself unboxing it as well. And I thought I'd just, you know, do these little five to ten minute long videos of me opening up all these toys. Purely as bonus videos uh, to go along with all the World of Tanks and War Thunder content. And um, they've, they've been amazingly popular. Just as an example, I mean, the last War Thunder video I put up got 40,000 views. But the first Project Man Cave video got 37,000 views. <laughs> like, what? What's going on? It's just me opening boxes. I don't get it. You lot are weird. Okay, okay, I, I, I do get it. I do understand. It, it's, you know, it's cool stuff. And um, I, I tell you, the whole idea for Project Man came, literally came. I think I was on um, Circumflex's live stream. I'm talking about, because a new room has become available in the house. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to move my bedroom into that room. And then I'm going to convert my old bedroom into a man cave. It's going to be my den. Uh, there's going to be, you know, the, I'm going to move the bed out and I'm basically going to buy a load of shelving and I'm just going to fill it up with stuff. I mean, I've got hundreds of DVDs and Blu-rays uh, and, and not enough space to, to, you know, to stack them properly. And I thought, well, why not buy? Because I have been collecting stuff for a while. I mean, the stuff that I've ordered for, you know, for the videos is just the latest in a long line of stuff that I've been collecting, uh, some of which I'm also showing you in the videos. But as I started going online and looking at what sort of stuff I could buy to decorate the room with, it got harder and harder to stop buying stuff. I never indulge myself on the level that I've done over the last two weeks with this Project Man Cave thing. I've, I've got some, you know, toys and stuff that I've collected, uh, various different, mo mostly movie collectibles. Uh, but it's taken me 20 years to gather the small amount of stuff that I have. Um, and I must have tripled the size of my collection in the last two weeks. And I blame the internet. I mean, you know what it's like when you, you, think, you think to yourself, oh, I must go and Google something. And whatever it is, you know, you put the search term into Google and hit the search key and bang. And while you're browsing through all the results, trying to find what it was you were looking for, you keep coming across all sorts of other stuff that you weren't looking for, but which starts to look really, really, really good. And normally, people have got that sort of safety valve, if you like, of having a wife or a significant other standing over their shoulder going, what? What? You, you can't afford that. No, no, put the credit card away. I, I don't have that safety valve. <laughs> There's nobody to tell me, Jingles, put the credit card down and step away from the keyboard. You know, there's, you know, and I can afford it, so I've just gone absolutely crazy. I mean, I'll be looking for a model of a Tiger tank, because you've got to have a Tiger tank. Um, but while I'm looking for the model of the Tiger tank, I'll see this awesome model of an M4 Sherman, and I, I want to, well, okay, I'll have that as well. And I'm looking for a model of a B-17, because, you know, everybody's got to have a B-17. And, and then I, oh, you, know, you, you know what I'm talking about. And most people, 
are very sensible about this sort of thing. They think, well, you know, uh, the wife or the girlfriend or the husband or whatever will go absolutely nuts if I buy that, 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 and that. So I'll just buy that. Ain't no, ain't no wife standing over my shoulder. <laughs> I don't have children to buy clothes for. You know, it's it's all for me. So I'm uh, I've been having a great time, uh, just spending stupid amounts of money buying stuff that I, I don't actually have anywhere to put. I mean, I haven't even bought the shelving yet. <laughs> and I don't care because I've just got all these things and there's more coming. So I've been really, really uh, enjoying doing these Project Man Cave videos. Um, and I'm, I'm really glad that you lot are enjoying them as well. And the Mighty Boo is getting some more screen time too and that's never a bad thing. And of course, once it's all done, I will be taking the video camera around the completed man cave and showing you everything all set up and lit and mounted and what have you. Um, and the computer set up as well. Um, I'm buying a new computer. I'm going to have This computer is purely going to be uh, for rendering video and uploading to YouTube. The new computer is going to be... I mean, this is a good game. Actually. You can see the, uh, the computer spec in the video description. It, it's, it's a couple of years old now, but it's still a good machine. The new one is going to be amazing, um, and that's going to be you know it's, all, it's basically just going to see and all, and again and for some bizarre reason, I keep getting the request. Jingles, can we see your computer setup? And I'm always reluctant to do it because a first I'd have to clean it. And, <laughs> and, well, I don't really need it to be. The A was so good, but yeah, that will all be coming in the final Project Man Cave video when I unload when I unload when I unveil the Man Cave itself. And for those of you who were saying, for God's sake, Jingles, do something about the wallpaper in your man cave. That is not the man cave. I'm in what is going to be the man cave right now. That room is going to be my bedroom, and it is literally only going to be used for sleeping in. So I'll be unconscious 99% of the time I'm in that room, and I really don't need to toss <laughs> about the wallpaper. So, there it is. Now... In last week's Mingles with Jingles, somebody asked the question, Jingles, what are you going to do to all those who oppose your evil gnomish world domination plan once you've taken over the world? And that was an excellent question, and I threw it open to you guys, the subscribers. What do you think I should do? What punishment should be inflicted upon those who have opposed me when I take over the world? Uh, which is coming along very nicely, thank you. It's all on schedule. And um, some of the replies... Holy shit, you guys are sick little puppies, aren't you? <laughs> I thought I was evil. Um, I'm just glad you're all on my side. Here's a selection. Remember Byron Ferguson says, Refusal to work in the salt mines will be punished as such. They must be given an end cleanly and have to fight against our great leader Jingles, <laughs> that's me, in whatever tank I choose. Not in world of tanks, but in real life. They and their families will pay for all repairs and ammunition costs, and they have to buy their own ammunition. <laughs> Forcing everybody to play World of Warplanes was a surprisingly popular and malicious alternative, but, you know, come on guys, <laughs> that's a bit harsh. Slender Barrel thinks they should all be made to play World of Tanks in stock M3 Lees with 50% crews in Tier 6 games only until they can get a Randy Walters medal. I like that idea, but let's make it a Pools medal. Perdition's Flames is an old-fashioned kind of guy. Not doing what Jingle says, that's a padlip. Bloody Red Squadron says they should all be locked in a padded cell with Piers Morgan. And initially I thought, why a padded cell? They wouldn't be able... Oh yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't be able to suicide. Oh, that is evil. The Death Sphere 13 likes to keep his punishment simple but effective. He says, just toss them in a bag full of salt and razor blades. <laughs> I do like that one. <laughs> and then Stuka said, Who will join me in the fight to stop Jingles from taking over the world? A comment which received zero replies <laughs> and zero thumbs ups. <laughs> I love you guys. So, everybody that I've mentioned, um, except for Stuka, obviously, gets one day off from the salt mines every year as their reward for being good, inventive, and really, really evil little minions. As for Stuka, Stuka, 
You're going first. <laughs> I was going to need somebody to test out the, uh, the tortures that the loyal and trustworthy minions have come up with. And I can't think of anybody better qualified. Please don't struggle. Resistance is futile. We know where you live. The minions will be there soon. Oh, Wayne Morgan's got a question. He says, Jingles, I've been playing War Thunder for about a year now, but I still haven't mastered the Jingles landing. Can you help? Ah, the Jingles landing. Well, I don't know if I should be giving away the secrets of all my most advanced flying techniques, but I will throw you a bone. I'll give you a couple of tips. Here we go. First, always land so hard, fast, and with your tail so high that your propellers dig themselves into the runway. Once you feel confident with this stage of the procedure, see if you can graduate to coming in so hard and so fast that you wreck your undercarriage, too. Once you've mastered these steps, you may wish to try doing something even more flamboyant, such as dispensing with the runway entirely. Style points may be awarded for the number of spins, or engines, that you can set on fire on landing, but frankly, this is just showing off. Once you feel confident with all of these steps, you may wish to try graduating to the much more complicated Jingles Takeoff. But I warn you, it's not as easy as it looks. Charles Saunders is next with another good question. He says, Jingles, is there such a thing as kill stealing? You know, when does focus fire become kill stealing? Okay, first of all, there is no such thing as kill stealing. Right? It's, it's not even a thing. I know there are plenty of people who think it is, but, you know, they're wrong. The people who complain in battle chat about kill stealing, or the people who complain on the forums about kill stealing, are generally the same kind of people who complain that a scout, spotting the entire enemy team from a stationary position hidden in a bush in the middle of Malinovka, is not scouting because he's in a bush. You know, they're idiots. And I don't actually have much of a problem with people raging about kill stealing, for example, in battle chat in a game like World of Tanks, because it's a pretty clear marker as to who the morons are, and, and I know to stay the hell away from them, and not rely on them, and expect them to do nothing useful for the team's success. And you should too, you know, you should, you should take whining in battle chat about kill stealing, um, and use it, you know, have a look at the name of the guy who's whining about the kill stealing, know his position on the map, plan your attack accordingly, right? Retard over there, don't rely on him. And the reason he's a moron is because in a game like World of Tanks, the number of kills that you have doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's, com it's almost completely irrelevant. Now, I say almost completely irrelevant because it's not 100% irrelevant, although in, in practice it may as well be. The amount of bonus XP that you get for getting the killing blow on an enemy tank is tiny. And it is never as much as the amount of XP and credits, because you don't get any bonus credits for killing a tank, but it's never as much as the amount of bonus credits and XP that you get for doing the full damage with your shot to a tank. The single major source of XP and credits in World of Tanks is through doing damage to enemy tanks, not from killing enemy tanks. You don't get any special XP or credit awards for getting titles, medals, battle hero awards, things like Top Guns, Radley Walters, Pools Medals. They look nice, they're great for your EP, but you don't get any extra XP and you don't get any extra credits for it, unless of course there's a special event going on which specifically awards extra XP and credits for attaining specific titles. I'll give you some specific examples. I've got a number of replays up on worldoftanksreplays.com and there's one of them where I got a load of kills and another one where I did a load of damage. The one where I got a load of kills, um, I mean, I've done better than this, but these are just the ones that I have uploaded at worldoftanksreplays.com. It was a seven kill game in the AT-8, it's a British tier eight tank destroyer. Oh no, sorry. I'll give you a couple of examples of how pointless the number of kills that you get are. If you go to worldoftanksreplays.com, in fact I'll put the links to these two replays in the video description, um, there's some of the replays that I've uploaded to worldoftanksreplays.com and in both of these games I was top tier. In one I got seven kills, in another I got three. 
The one with seven kills was an 88 game on Malinovka, standard battle. I did 2094 damage, but I got seven kills. I was top tier. For those seven kills, 1150 base experience without a premium account. With a premium account, 1725. So that's seven kills, 2094 damage done as a top tier tank. The next game is in my IS-3, and again, top tier tank. Only got three kills, did 4547 damage. Base experience without a premium account, 1962. With a premium account, 2943, nearly 3000. Now, just to put those numbers into perspective for you, just to really drive the point home, two games, one of them seven kills, one of them three kills. In the game where I got seven kills as a top tier tank, with a premium account, earned less experience for those seven kills than the game where I got three kills if I'd been running a standard account without the benefit of premium experience bonus. That's just how completely irrelevant getting kills is in World of Tanks. Well, actually, that's not strictly true. Obviously, getting kills is important, because if your team doesn't get any kills, then your team is going to find it hard to win. But who gets the kills is not important. It really doesn't matter. In fact, in a lot of situations, I have been very grateful that somebody else has taken a kill from me. I mean, for example, when I'm driving something with a, with a, you know, with a gun like the BL-10, and I've hit an enemy tank, and I've left him on 50 health. I don't want to be the one to fire the next shot into him. For a start, it takes forever to reload just to do 20 damage to somebody. And that shot's going to cost me 1,650 credits. And I, I, you know, I want to get my money's worth out of it. It can do up to 750 damage. I want to do 750 damage. I don't want to waste it on a tank that only has 20 health left. So there are occasions when I am grateful that somebody has, you know, stolen a kill from me because it's spared me the indignity of having to do it myself with something that is just totally overpowered for the purposes of taking 20 health off an enemy tank. If you want another example of just how pointless the number of kills you get is, just the game that you're watching right now, Ferdinand in a tier 10 game on Prokhorovka. In this game, I only get two kills. I kill a VK4502P and a mouse. Um, I also hit a T30, and I do 435 damage to him. I hit the VK4502P five times and do 1950 damage to him. I hit a T110E4 and do 487 damage to him. And I hit the mouse five times and do 1091 damage to him. I come out of this game with 1506 base experience. 2259 for a premium account. Grand total of 3,012 experience from this match for the first win of the day for killing two tanks. It wasn't the kills, it was the damage. Another factor, of course, is the kind of battle that you're in. In this game, I'm in a Ferdinand, tier 8 tank destroyer, and I'm shooting exclusively at tier 9 and 10 tanks. So I do 4,000 damage in this game, and that's worth a lot more than, for example, a tier 8 tank like the Ferdinand, shooting up lots and lots and lots of tier 7 and tier 6 machines. I could do the same amount of damage in a tier 8 top game in the Ferdinand as I did in this tier 8 bottom game in the Ferdinand and then a far lower amount of XP and credits for doing it. But once again, the number of kills that I get is almost completely irrelevant. It's the damage that you do and how much higher or lower tier than you the targets that you're shooting at. That's all that really matters. The number of kills is there for bragging rights only. And it's nice. I mean, I've had a Jagdtiger game uh, where I was top tier with 10 kills. And that's, you know, that was amazing. It was a fantastic game. It's one of my most watched replays. And, and it was a great game. But I didn't get anything special for getting 10 kills other than bragging rights. So, generally speaking, people, certainly in World of Tanks, definitely 100%. No question about it. People complaining about kill stealing in World of Tanks are just idiots, right? And you just don't listen to them. Now, 
It's a different matter in a game like War Thunder, where you do receive a substantial credit and XP bonus for actually getting the kill. Because there are no health bars in War Thunder, there's no obvious way, I mean, I'm sure, under the bonnet of the game, you know, under the hood, as the Americans would say, there's certainly a way of tracking how much damage you are doing to the various different equipment modules and control surfaces and so on and so on of the planes that you're shooting at, but the game certainly doesn't track it and it certainly doesn't uh, reward you for it other than, oh, you scored a critical here, have a small amount of XP and credits. The big bucks come from getting the kills. And so there's a lot of raging in War Thunder about kill stealing. However, if, as is so often the case in a War Thunder arcade battle, there are five of you shooting at one enemy aircraft, um, who's to say who's doing the kill stealing? Y you're all equally responsible for the damage done to the one guy that you've all jumped on. And, um, you know, if arcade battles in War Thunder or anything to go by from the damage that you're all doing to each other as you're shooting through each other to get to the one guy you're going after. Um, you know, who, who is the kill stealer and who is the kill steal E? If there are five of you, you know, uh, going after the same guy at the same time. So, you know, that's nonsense. The other occasion when, and, and I have been particularly annoyed by this sort of thing happening, is when, for example, I'm on the tail of a bomber. Just to pick an example, in a fighter, and I have emptied three full reloads of magazines into this guy, scored multiple critical hits, killed numerous of his crew, and he's going down, but he's in no hurry to do it. And then a friendly swoops in out of nowhere, fires one burst, kills the pilot, or whatever, and flies off with a kill, and a nice XP and credit bonus for doing it. That's annoying, but if you suck at aiming so much that it took you three ammunition belt reloads and you still hadn't killed this guy, whose fault is it that somebody else had to come in and do what you couldn't do? Uh, is that really kill stealing or is it just, you know, cleaning up your mess? Or, if you want to look at it from another perspective, again, in War Thunder, let's flip the situation on its head. Let's look at it from the other side. Because uh, it happened today. Um, it's happened many, many times, and, and it happens often, where I'll be in a game of War Thunder, and I'm looking around for my next target, and I spot somebody two kilometers away below me, um, heading off in the opposite direction. I think, oh, great, I can dive on him, build up some speed, nice, easy kill. And then I notice two, three, maybe four, sometimes more, other friendly fighters all at lower altitude, closer to this guy, and they're all making a beeline straight towards him. And I think, nah, waste of time. He'll be dead before I get there. So I go looking for another target. Um, and, and this happened today. So I find another target, kill him, and then break off, regain altitude, and I look. And that guy that I was originally going after, he's still alive. You know, the three idiots on him are now two idiots because he's killed one of them. <laughs> and and he's kicking their asses. And, I, and I've had to go over and kill him for them. And got accused of kill stealing. That, that's not kill stealing. That's cleaning up the incompetent mess you made. It's not kill stealing. If you're not capable of killing him, how is it stealing the kill? <laughs> yeah, just, you know, what you, need, what you need to do is stop, take a breath, step back, look at the situation again, and then you realise that actually, yes, I, you're right, I am full of shit, that wasn't kill stealing. Thank you for pointing out the obvious. I'll shut up and stop being an idiot now, said nobody on the internet, ever. I mean, I'm not saying that there is no kill stealing in War Thunder, there is, but it happens so infrequently. Uh, you know, genuine kill stealing. Uh, example, I've been on the tail of somebody, filled him full of holes, wrecked him, his control services are gone. And we're primarily talking in realistic battles here, for example, where ammunition is precious. Um, and I think, yep, yeah, he's lost control, he's going down, He'll, he's going to hit the ground in 10 seconds. So I break off, wait for him to die, and then somebody comes screaming past in a 700 km per hour dive, puts one burst into the guy, and because he was the last one to hit him, he gets the kill. And that is really, really annoying. But it doesn't happen often enough for it to be a problem. 
so to sum up in fact in fact you know i've forgotten what the question was <laughs> i've babbled on for so long i've forgotten what the Oh yes, is there such a thing as kill stealing and when does Focus 5 become kill? Well, no. In World of Tanks there's no such thing as kill stealing. And anybody who thinks there is is an idiot and you shouldn't listen to them. In War Thunder, yeah, that sort of there sort of is, but it's nowhere near as big a problem as as the people crying about it would have you believe. Um thanks for the question actually. I really enjoyed answering that one. Hopefully you all enjoyed listening to me answer that one. And if you didn't, tough shit. No refunds. All exchanges are final, and you can't have the previous six minutes of your life back. Sorry. Well, anyway, um, coming to the end of the video now, and I wanted to close off by mentioning that as I'm recording this video, right now, the YouTube channel is sitting at 187,000 subscribers, which is just mind-blowing. That's 87,000 subscribers in the seven months it's only been seven months since the 100,000 subscriber celebration. So basically I just wanted to make sure that you all know I am aware that we're coming up to 200,000 subscribers and yes there is definitely going to be some kind of giveaway. Um, I don't know exactly what shape or form it's going to take. All I know is I don't want to leave out the War Thunder uh, subscribers to quite the same extent that we did the last time around. Whatever I plan to do, there's going to be just as many prizes and giveaways and goodies for the guys that come here for the War Thunder content as for the World of Tanks players. And whatever I do for World of Tanks, it is definitely not going to involve me looking through three and a half thousand replays again. But um, more news on that as we come closer to the big event itself, which is probably going to happen in a couple of weeks at the rate the channel is growing, for which I am, of course, eternally grateful to you all. I have no idea <laughs> what it is I'm doing right, um, but whatever it is, I'm just glad that so many of you seem to enjoy it. As always, folks, take care on that battlefield. Watch your six, whatever you're playing, have fun playing it, and I'll catch you next time.